Hello scholars, welcome. Mr. Hinkle here. Today I would like to discuss what are the various topics within this subfield of oceanography known as physical oceanography. The objective of today's lecture is to do just that, introduce the key topics. So let's talk about what the heck is physical oceanography. Well, it's very much like it sounds if we take the two words. Oceanography is the study of all aspects of the marine environment, and physical is going to be the aspects or the properties that can be observed, recorded, and measured using various instruments. Key topics that we have are going to be temperature, density, pressure light, sound, and currents. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list to physical oceanography, but as the title has stated, this does provide us an introduction for some of the key topics that are important within this field. So, ocean temperature is the thermal energy in seawater. I think you and I are probably most familiar with temperature because of the weather. Is it going to be hot today? Is it going to be cool today? There are trends. Summers are hot, winters are cool, but then there is variability within that. But also, it's hotter at the equator and colder at the poles. So we can measure temperature in the ocean and it also varies. It varies, it's going to be most of these things, oops, by depth. Here's the Earth with the equator and the continents. Something like that. And by latitude. Because we're interested in understanding the physical characteristics of these different topics and how do they vary through both time and space. Temperature in the oceans, average temp is about four degrees, but it can be pretty cold, minus two degrees. Minus two, wouldn't the ocean freeze? Well, there's salt in the oceans, uh, which lowers the freezing temperature, all the way up to 30 degrees, which is hot, hot, hot. In the oceans, the ocean temperature, it buffers Earth's climate, it drives ocean currents, and this supports all life on Earth. So what the heck? This one little thing of physical oceanography is thankful, uh, is uh, responsible, I'm thankful, for supporting all life on Earth. Well, it's not exclusive, but ocean temperature does play a key role. Density. Density by definition is the mass of seawater per unit volume. And there are trends here we can see, my crude little drawing, uh, actual sea surface density uh, map from satellite data that shows latitudinal variations. So density is important for ocean circulation, for ocean mixing, for marine life distribution, um, and then it also drives currents, helps to move heat around, and regulates Earth's climate. So here we are again, looking at physical oceanography and the importance and the impacts that they have on a global scale, not only for how our Earth's surface works, but also for all of the organisms that live on the surface of Earth and in Earth's oceans. Pressure. Pressure might be my favorite. Because the depths of the bottom of the ocean in the Mariana Trench, 35,000 feet deep, the pressure is so big. The deeper you go, the more the pressure is. It's kind of like this. Here's my favorite thought experiment for pressure. If you and I and 30 of our best friends formed, we were you know, 10 years old again, we all jumped on each other and formed this big dog pile, 30 people deep. The person at the bottom feels the pressure of the weight 
of every single person on top of them. The person 15 people deep feels the weight of the 14 people on top of them, and the person on the top only feels the pressure of the air. So there is a direct relationship between pressure and temp, uh, pressure and depth, and it's about one atmospheric pressure for every 10 meters. Go 10 kilometers down into the ocean, and you've got a thousand atmospheric pressures weighing down on you. That would crush a human being. Okay, so important four, ocean circulation. Marine life adaptations to their physiology, deep sea equipment operation. So there's things at the bottom of the ocean, and there are interests that are down there. Light. Light is so important. The sun is the primary source of energy for all life on Earth. Now, deep in the bottom of the ocean, there are some chemosynthetic bacteria that are supporting these hydrothermal vent communities, but that's about 5% of marine primary productivity. The other 95% of marine productivity comes from light from the sun, which drives photosynthesis, which supports marine food webs. So light, the availability, the variability, the location distribution of light is really important for driving marine food webs. Primary producers need to be where there is sunlight and nutrients. Consumers go where the primary producers are. So we can look and understand how marine life moves through the ocean at different times of the year because of seasonal variations in order to find food. Light is essential for primary productivity, the behavior of marine organisms, and then oceanic processes like heat absorption because sunlight has a lot of heat. Sound. Sound is a cool one. Sound is a form of energy that is transmitted through pressure waves. Right now on land, the sound that you're hearing, well, it's going through the microphone and it, okay, yeah, it's got this long pathway to get to you. But if you're standing here, you would be hearing the pressure waves of air as the sound that I am emitting is received into your ear. In the ocean, Sound travels similarly through pressure waves, but a lot faster, almost five times as faster. Uh, it's variable in the ocean because there are other factors that are going to influence sound. <clears throat> and you have a lot of marine species communicating by sound in the ocean. So sound, really cool, also very important. Currents, let's do this. Currents, oceanic circulation really highlights the boundary and the interactions between the air and the sea, between the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. And they're driven primarily by differences in pressure in the atmosphere that causes wind, but that interacts on the surface of the earth. And it moves ocean water on the surface as surface currents, kind of like when you see a really windy day and it's blowing and creating waves, it's driving uh, surface currents, but then also differences in density that have a lot to do with temperature and salinity. Salinity is actually a chemical oceanography uh, topic, will cause surface currents to become deep currents and then there's a suite of how deep currents work. In fact, I have entire lectures on oceanic circulation, which will be in addition to physical oceanography. But currents at the surface interact with deep ocean currents to create a global conveyor belt of the movement of our oceans called thermohaline circulation. Thermo, heat. Haline, salt, temperature, and salinity work together to create a global movement of vertical and horizontal motion in the ocean. So this is our introduction. I will be going into each one of them a little bit deeper, but 
the ocean, as we have seen, all of these things, they're the physical characteristics of the ocean support life. And one way that they support life is that they help to regulate Earth's climate because without a stable climate, without an atmosphere, there would be no ability for life to be here. We can observe, measure, record characteristics of physical oceanography and understand their individual impacts and how they uh, accumulate and add together to help our oceans function. Thank you so much. This is our introduction to physical oceanography, and I'll see you as we dive a little bit deeper into each one of these topics.